People often compare Linux to Windows on the desktop. There's a very big debate about which is better, but we don't often talk about which is better for the server side of things. People often say Windows Server is inferior to Linux because it has a graphical user interface. The idea is real men use the commands line. Uh, but in reality, there is actually a version of Windows Server that does not have any graphics and it's all commands line driven. And that one is especially interesting to compare to Linux because you can make it behave very similar to how Linux behaves. Uh, you can manage it using pretty much all the same motions. So let's compare Windows Server Core to Linux so that we can really determine which one is the superior server operating system. So with all of that being said, let's dig right in. Alright, so what is Windows Server Core? So Windows Server Core is Windows Server but without the graphical interface. It is 100% driven by the commands line. It does come with a few commands line utilities to aid you in managing the server, doing general things like changing the IP address, etc. Uh, but for the most part, you're gonna be running PowerShell. Uh, this is a good thing in my book. Personally, I like PowerShell better than Bash. I think that the verbose nature of it makes it more approachable and readable by non-technical people. And at the same time, it's more flexible because because of its object-oriented nature. However, Bash is not bad, and I will happily use Bash to manage any system, but if I have to choose between one or the other, I'm actually going to choose PowerShell. So there are some benefits to running Windows Server Core. One of the big ones is security. Because there's no graphical user interface, that scoops out a huge chunk of the code that comes with Windows. And because there's less stuff there, there's less stuff to exploit, there's less stuff to attack. And because of that, Windows Server Core is actually pretty secure compared to regular Windows Server, and even trades blows with Linux. In fact, there is one aspect of Windows Server Core that I think actually makes it superior to Linux in terms of security, and that is Windows Defender. Now, this is not a clear-cut win-or-lose situation. You see, most Linux distributions come with a mandatory access control system, like SE Linux. This prevents unauthorized processes from accessing things they shouldn't, uh, which is really good, and Windows doesn't really have anything like that. On the flip side, Windows has Windows Defender, which is a full-fledged anti-malware, antivirus system. Linux doesn't have something like this by default. And so it's, it's not a matter of one being better than the other. They're honestly probably about equal. The, the biggest threat to either of them is the administrator who, who administrates them. Uh, but it's an interesting comparison, isn't it? Another benefit of Windows Server Core over Windows Server is obviously that it uses less resources. Uh, this is great because you can, say, have a Windows Server Core virtual machine, and it can have lower specs than a full-fledged Windows Server install with the GUI. And dare I say, Windows Server Core is actually easier to manage than Windows Server. Uh, honestly, the Windows Server graphical UIs for managing all of that mess, that, that stuff is ancient, like it's straight out of the 90s. It's not very usable, but a nice healthy commands line interface that can do pretty much everything you need to do, uh, that's always going to be a win in my book. Alright, so let's talk about setting up a Windows Server Core installation compared to Linux. So funny enough, Linux Server is actually easier to install. Uh, the Linux Server installations are generally speaking a commands line interface driven affair, while the Windows installation medium uses a graphical user interface regardless of what version of Windows Server you're installing. So the reason Linux is easier to set up and install than Windows is because it does a lot of the setup for you when you're installing it. You see, with Linux, you're able to set your static IP, you're able to set up your non-root account, you're able to set up automatic updates, you're, you're able to set up SSH, 
Uh, you're able to set up sudo and group memberships. You can do all of that legwork ahead of time on your Linux server while, while it installs. And compare that to Windows, where you actually have to put in a decent amount of work to get it to behave like Linux. You have to enable SSH. You have to open up the firewall to allow inbound SSH connections. You have to set up sudo. You have to set up your network adapter. You have to set up your non-administrator user account. You know, there's like at least half a dozen things that you have to do after you install Windows Server that you just don't have to do on Linux. So yeah, setting up a Windows Server core installation and a Linux installation, uh, Linux is actually much easier. So let's talk about actually using the servers. Uh, once you have them set up, it's very close. As in, you SSH into it, you run commands on the commands line, you use sudo to elevate your privileges, and it's all, it's all very similar. It, the, the biggest difference is that you're using PowerShell on one and Bash on the other. Uh, that's the main difference, mechanically speaking, of using the servers. But here's the thing. Uh, Linux servers have a lot more software available for them. Now, you might be thinking, hold on, don't most corporations that make software make it for Windows Server? And you'd be right. However, they make it for the graphical version of Windows Server. The library of software you have available in the commands line, the Windows Server core version, uh, you have a much smaller library of software. Like, there's just much less that you can actually run compared to Linux, which has massive numbers of software packages available. Like, when it comes down to the wire, Windows Server Core has less stuff you can do than you can with Linux. Now, this might not be a bad thing, because Windows Server Core does excel at some tasks, specifically the server roles that Microsoft officially supports. Stuff like Active Directory, uh, Windows Server Update Services, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, you can even do DHCP and DNS if you want to. Uh, all of this stuff that Microsoft officially supports is a pretty good use case for Windows Server Core. Uh, unfortunately, though, if you're in a business environment, you're probably get, at some point going to have to use the graphical version of Windows Server for some third-party vendor software that only works on that. So both Windows Server Core and Linux have graphical web UIs. And the graphical web UIs on Linux are so much better. I'm looking at stuff like P Cockpit. Cockpit is a great graphical interface in the web browser for managing your Linux servers. Uh, on the Windows side, you have Windows Admin Center. And Windows Admin Center is a slow, bloated, laggy, crappy, buggy mess. It's a piece of shit. Uh, I don't use it, I don't recommend it, it's, it's pointless, it's too, it's too slow. The good part about it is that it's using PowerShell in the background. That's part of why it's so slow though. But because it's using PowerShell, you can actually get it to spit out the commands and show you what commands it's running, which helps you build scripts to automate that kind of stuff in the future. That's, that's pretty cool. I'd love to see something like that in Cockpit. But for the time being, Cockpit's still the superior web UI, simply because it works. <laughs> it, it works. <laughs> That's where the bar is. So when should you use Windows Server Core? Essentially, when you have something Microsoft environment-wise, that's when it makes sense to use Windows Server Core. Otherwise, you should just default to Linux servers. And if you absolutely must have uh, a Windows installation. And if you absolutely must, you can have yourself a graphical Windows installation for software like Veeam or whatever you're running. Anyway, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you tuning into this little video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing down below. If you liked this video, you know what to do. If you disliked it, that's fine too. Make sure you hit the button either way. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.